All right, everyone, and I am back. Good to see you. We're going to dive into this masterclass. Uh, this is actually a, yeah, I get this request a lot, which I'm glad I'm covering because um, let's check one second. Uh, Leafy, uh, so basically the session's for Leafy. She was asking about, or she actually showed me an image that uh, had some light with it. And uh, I wanna work with light and shadow. So this goes like right along with uh, what she's trying to do. So she sent me this message uh, via uh, good old Discord. And she's kind of working on light, right? So creating light and shadow. So like glowing orbs. That's what I'm gonna start with is just kind of make a, a, a light source and integrate it into a scene, right? So let's just double click right here. Uh, by the way, we can also do that with this too. We can easily, I was thinking about adding some light and some drama with this particular scene as well. Um, but I also kind of like this one too, because it's like darker. I need something like a little bit darker. So like here's, here's one scene, right? Can we have some glowing orbs in the middle of this street? So that's the idea and we'll get started, okay? Hopefully everything's good to go. Just checking, checking in with everybody, checking in. Oh, Andrea, awesome, cool. All right, cool. Checking chat, hello, Cal and um, Fairy, awesome. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. All right, so right in here, let's kind of work on it right now. I'm gonna, this is a master class, so I usually kind of go beyond the basics and I start moving a little bit faster, all right? Because, hey, you know what? This has, you can always pause it and play it back and all that fun stuff. But uh, let's just go ahead and uh, grab a circle. The fill is gonna be just a lovely teal color, as we can see right here. Here's our lovely teal, okay? So that's what we have so far. We can throw a glow on it, jumping in here, doing a, adding an outer glow like so. That's gonna be set to that same teal color, maybe a little bit stronger. And then let's make, give it more of a spread and then just a bigger size. Actually, let's take that spread down. So we're giving it a nice glow, okay? You can't add a separate, um, another outer glow for whatever reason. I don't know why, but what we can do is we can grab a drop shadow. Actually, I already have it set up, but uh, basically a, a drop shadow, right? With its distance set to zero uh, and then taking the size up basically simulates a glow as well. Okay, so just like that, that's what we're doing. We'll click okay. And there's your easiest way to kind of like make a glow. Um, let's actually go back in there really fast because I want to point out that this outer glow has a blend mode set to it. So you want to go from normal, this is normal, right? And typically change it to uh, this first, second, third, this fourth category, overlay, soft light, something like that, all right? Check one out one of those, right? So I typically play with those there you have it. That's the easiest way to make a glow, right? We can move it around, right? And we can see it start to cast um, this glow around it. But we want to go beyond this because, you know, you could use these procedural, um, you know, these sort of standard effects, but you want to make it look maybe like a little bit more organic by adding some brushwork to it. So B for brush with a very... Um, 0% for the hardness, and then we can kind of paint around it to just give it like a little bit of an abnormal shape, okay? Again, that's typically what I would do. Set that to maybe like overlay as well. One of those two. All right. All right. Fix my hair, and let's continue. Let's add some fun to this, huh? Shall we? So here's the thing about this. Like we've created this glow Right? If it's if it's really sitting there in this in this environment, it's gonna start casting that light to things around it. Right? So this orb should be casting um, light right down here on the ground. So that's what we need to do next. Is add a new layer, B for brush, 
come down here and then just start painting down here as well. Let's just take down the flow to, uh, you know, 14 or 15, so we can kind of layer it on. Uh, anytime you're just painting right on it, it's like not gonna look that right, right? Because this light isn't gonna reach where there's, where something's cast in shadow, right? So it's just not gonna reach those areas. So what you wanna do is again, go over here to your blend modes. Jump down here to say overlay or soft light, um, maybe hard light, but overlay seems to work. And with it set to overlay, I could start to paint. So it's casting that light kind of beneath it like so, right? So that's what I'm doing right now. Painting this light being cast beneath it. Let's add a new layer. There we go. I now have two layers. They're both set to overlay. And now I'm just kind of layering on that orb glow that's being cast on that uh, manhole. How do you get your brushes uh, not in folders? Um, I just, they're actually in folders, but they're open. So I just have everything open like so. But you could easily uh, take any brush and move it outside of folders as well. These two are not in folders because those are ones that I've made recently. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go. Because what would also be fun in here, oh, let's take this spatter brush just for fun. This needs so many things, by the way. Here's this lovely spatter brush that I could use. So it could have other little fun little elements outside of it, just, just for kicks, right? Oops. I could rotate this brush by using the arrow keys, right? Because I don't want it to have that same pattern, but I can just kind of do some little dots like so. Right from there, we can we want to cast that use that same glow uh, and drop shadow. So I can hold down the Option key or Alt key if you're on a PC and drag that effect to that layer of the little uh, smaller little orbs. Right and drop it on. Now they each have their own little glow as well. Right that we can put around it. Um, let's say those little guys are a little bit more intense. Right, so we can go in there, we can add a gradient overlay to them. This is what I, again, what I would do since it's my masterclass, why not? Sample that teal color, uh, get rid of that. So we just like, we're making, we're giving it like, uh, like it has a little bit of, it's lighter on top, but then it actually kind of trails into the teal color. So that's what I'm doing there. It's just giving it a gradient overlay. It's kind of fun, cool. All right, uh, okay, let me know if you have questions. I'm here for you guys, I'm doing this for you. Okay, just so you know, so let me know if you have questions. I'd happy be happy to answer them. So, I am here for you guys. All right, so I think, so this is the thing. Anytime you're doing any compositing, if you're gonna create something magical, and I got more things to create, because we're only 10 minutes in, and we've already created one thing. But look for interesting ways to make it look like it's part of the environment, right? One thing I can do is maybe not make this 100% opaque. What if I take down the fill, for instance? All right, so for this ellipse, for our, orb, let's take down the fill. What the fill does is the fill will take down, uh, obviously the fill color, but not the opacity of the whole thing. So this is a global opacity for that layer, and this just works on the fill layer. So in this case, I can take that fill down, uh, like so, if I want to, all right? So the overlay for the glow, by the way, let's just deconstruct this. It's just this, mainly this outer glow with something set to overlay. So the key really here is your blend mode set to overlay. That's really all it is. Because here I have an outer glow set to overlay, a drop shadow set to, I paint it on a, another layer with overlay, right? And that's what we get, right? So this is, this is kind of neat, but what it's doing is if this is an orb, it's like transparent 
And that's not how it would really look. Like I wanna add some more interesting things to this. So maybe it's like a glass orb and we're going to um, like add some distortion on the inside there. So that's what we'll try. Okay, let's try that out right now. Um, let's just jump this layer. Let's actually grab a piece of this. This is gonna be interesting. This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna just select a piece of that city. This piece right here. Actually, let's do a little bit better job. Let's just grab it like so. Let's just try this. Smart object. Uh, let's just try this. Spherize. Okay, zoom down. And just taking a look at it. Okay, so that's what's gonna happen. All right, so there's a couple different ways to do this as well, all right? So this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's do this. Let's, I'm gonna double click inside of this layer. Here's this square. Inside of this square, this is where I'm gonna add the sphere eyes. So let's just try this. Distort, sphere eyes. There it is. It does it for the whole canvas. That's why I had to put it in a different file. But this is what I want. I want this bending of those elements as if it's a sphere. Okay, click OK. There's my bending of that element. Close it, save it, close it. Makes it kind of large. Let's undo that. And let's just, we just need to try this a couple times, don't we? This is what we're going to do now. Wait for it. Let's go just right there. Sure, why not? Okay. Bear with me, folks. Grabbing this background. So let's turn off these other elements. <clears throat> Here's this smart object. And then let's spherize it. There it is. We spherize that little segment that's actually part of that bigger scene right which happens to be or it's happen hap, it's going to happen to go inside of uh this lovely little orb right so that's all we're doing we're putting this over the top of it like that i just wanted this fun little distortion right here here's a bet here's another way this so basically i'm going to show you how to do this two different ways if you wanted to do this sort of thing we need to add light we need to add so many things to this this needs so much, so much needs to happen here, by the way. Uh, there needs to be um, a little brighter light on part of this. Right, that we need to work with. Okay, and it could be darker in other spots. Um, okay, so does that make sense? Does that make sense? So this is the problem with this, the way I just did this, uh, is because I can't move it. Like I really can't, I can't move the orb because I can't separate it from that, that sphere in the center, right? And uh, what I'd probably actually do with this too is I would throw a new layer on top of that. We'll go with curves, right? Clip it to just that layer, crank it up. this, bam. There we go. There we go. I just brightened up the inside, right? Using this curves layer. <laughs> okay, let's continue. All right, let's get to what I wanted to talk about. The problem with this is I can't move it around because I would, it's, it's kind of locked to the background. If I move this, right, it's breaking the illusion to some degree. It actually might not matter that much, to be honest with you. Uh, but another way to execute this would be, again, let's kind of turn off some of this stuff. Let's make this a smart object. And then let's go to filter. We'll go into liquify. 
Because in liquify, we can start to push around these pixels as well. So right over here, we have this lovely bloat tool, right? Because that's all that spherize did was kind of bloat it. So right down here, maybe making this a little bit larger. And here I am bloating this part of the scene, right? Just distorting it, okay? Click OK. It bloats that part. But the nice thing is I can always edit this. Since it's a smart object, I can jump in and change that liquify uh, to a different spot if I want to. So those are two different ways to just kind of distort the background. How's everybody doing? Um, all right, so let's add, let's add some more to this because I want to add some shadows to this. I think this makes sense. You guys get it, right? We have a fun little orb that's kind of glowing and casting light. Uh, where maybe the fill could be like a little bit brighter, right? You guys get the idea. Is that cool? Um, we could do this with really any element. So this is, this is kind of fun to do this with an orb. Another thought is to kind of use like, say, a jellyfish, right? So that's what these layers are. It's like, hey, what if these jellyfish were kind of floating around uh, in this scene as well? And what if these jellyfish had glows? Right, so that's another thing that we can go ahead and execute on if we want to, right? But I also have other ideas that I want to do, so uh, maybe I'll save this for later. But it would be uh, a matter of isolating this jellyfish, like so. Layer mask, double click, using this. There we go, let's grab all that black using a refine edge, grab all that black like so, click OK, there it is. Same process, in fact, let's shift its color a little bit. There we go, so it's more, uh, matches the scene maybe a little bit better. And then we can do the same thing by adding all those fun glows and all that fun stuff. Um, I fly eyedropper, B for brush, come in here and kind of paint like so, change that down. I don't know, that one's okay, but I want to kind of move on to something else if I could. Will you guys let me, you guys let me do it? Right, this just needs more work, but it's more of the same, okay? And I want to deal with like actually matching the light of a scene and, and doing some other shadows and fun things, okay? Um, but so we'll just go ahead and save that. We'll close it. We'll jump to another scene. But in order to do that without giving away a surprise, I'm going to switch screens really fast. All right? Give me one second. Let's do something very like atmospheric, like this image here. Okay? Keith, thanks for hanging out with us. All right, greetings from Egypt. Good to have you here, Ziad. Good to have you here. Awesome. All right, so Lucas, not to worry. I'm glad you're joining me as well. Uh, this is like a cool scene, right? This is this just has a lot of this is like a lot of drama going on with this scene. So we could add something fun to this, right? It could be an orb. There's already an orb there. I want to do something kind of cool. I am actually going to jump out to a site that I love, which is Pixel Squid. Pixelsquid.com, shout out to them, they're super cool. Uh, basically, it's a, I think it's a monthly uh, subscription of like $20 that uh, will give you these 3D elements that you can go ahead and use in scene. So it's really easy to work with, right? So we'll jump in here, I'll do a search for say a dragon and we'll grab a fun dragon right in here. So here's a dragon, here's another one. Oh. Oh, so cool. Dragon lurking. Okay. Ooh, this is fun. Here's a dragon attacking. Adding it to my light box, right? We can move this around 
But yeah, if we could do something where this dragon is flying, this is gonna be awesome, right? So adding that to my light box, right in here, here is Pixel Squid, right? Has a plugin, and sure enough, we can see uh, there's, that might be the dragon I just added, it might not be, but we'll wait for that to sync. But I could always click on that item, download it. So here it is. Resolution, let's change it to high. Turn off the drop shadow, right? And not only that, let's rotate it. So we'll rotate this around like so. There it is, we can position it up, kind of like that. Cool. So this is nice. Everything's already rendered, so we didn't have to worry about rendering anything. We can't control the lighting with Pixel Squid though, right? So ultimately what I'd wanna do is I'd want to get a 3D model of a dragon, an OBJ file. I would load it up into Dimension and then do a rendering with the lighting in the, um, uh, in the right spot. So that's actually what I would do. So I would jump out to stock.adobe.com Uh, search for dragon, let's just dragon. And right in here, let's change this to 3D and see what we get, right? If what you can't find isn't out there, you can always go to uh, TurboSquid. TurboSquid.com is another 3D uh, website where you can find 3D models. So we'll do dragon there. Again, we're not gonna render it because we don't have time, but right in here, we can go into price. Let's change this to free. Again, this is TurboSquid. Pixel Squid, they're already rendered as pixels. Turbo Squid has the actual 3D model. Right in here, we can see that these are actually, oh, these are looking pretty cool. Typically, you're gonna get what you pay for. So if something's free, you know, quality may, may vary. Uh, what I want is an OBJ file. So right in here, I could actually do a search for format OBJ, right? So it's an OBJ and it's free. Sure enough, this one fits the bill. We can go ahead and download it. There's the OBJ, done. All right. Yeah, Turbo Squid has been around for like a millennia. They've been around forever. Okay, let's create a new file. Here we are. I downloaded the asset. Let's import the 3D model. Done, done. Uh, quality may vary. Let's see what we get. I haven't downloaded this one. Here it is. Let's fit it to the scene. <clears throat> Excuse me. And here's, here's this dragon. Yeah, maybe that'll work. He's not really flying. Um, can't really edit it, right? So, <clears throat> and it doesn't have any textures with it currently. I'd have to go ahead and add all of that stuff, just so you know. Uh, let's jump in. Again, I'd have to add all of that stuff. So yeah, needs work, folks, right? This could be a starting place for me. Uh, I'd wanna add lights, say in the background, let's add uh, just a circle light and let's rotate it because we'd want that light to come from behind him like that so he's in shadow let's take the environment light down a lot in fact let's even drop in the background that we need so we're doing this kind of two different ways let's take this let's just export out this very quickly to my desktop and drop it into the background. There it is, okay, done. Right, you get the idea. Ground plane, no, we don't need a ground plane. So anyways, I would have to do all this lighting. This is a Photoshop masterclass, so I don't wanna to get too deep into Adobe Dimension, but I'd kind of be doing you a disservice if I didn't show you this, right? Um, and, uh, and use this. So right in here also for the, the light, 
I would wanna use that same image too. So now this light, uh, the, what's being reflected is also that same background. So here's my environment light. I'm actually using that background image. Same thing for this directional line. It actually is a color, but I can go ahead and use that lovely washed out grayish color uh, for the background. But so there's that. We could render it. Let's move on. Let's, I'm showing you so many, so many tips and tricks, guys. Isn't this fun? Uh, oh, cube, cube brush. Oh, cool. Free OBJs from cube brush. I did not know that. Okay, it's right in here. Let's go back to our lovely dragon. Here it is. It's looking pretty good, right? It's spinnable. Okay. Um, let's actually do this. Let's try this. Because I like this dragon. We need to work on the lighting. And uh, we need to work on the, its shape. So I'm going to use Puppet Warp on this dragon and start to just add some pins in parts of it. Because I want this dragon to be maybe a little bit more stretched out. Right, like he's actually flying. I don't want to make it look like it's standing. So let's move that foot down. Let's make this wing very big and dramatic. We'll do something like that. Let's stretch out the tail, right? We're just making it look, look really big and dramatic if we could, like so, okay? That's what I'm using, Puppet Warp, Enter, okay? Lighting is all off, right? We know that. Lighting is, is off, right? Because what do we want to do? We want to match, we need to match the blacks and match the lights. So match the darks, match the lights, match the color. I know a lot of people what they, well, I know what some people will do is they'll go in and they'll add just a black and white filter. You add that black and white adjustment layer and you it just removes all the color temporarily just so you can see. If the blacks aren't matching, this clearly tells you what isn't matching, right? Here's, since this is a masterclass, this is my favorite Photoshop tip. I'm so excited about this. This is my favorite, my favorite, favorite Photoshop tip. So uh, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer, okay? Here's the curves panel, lovely curves panel. I'm gonna make sure it just clips to the layer of the dragon, so clipping mask. I just hold down the uh, option key and then click between those two layers. Now it's clipped just, and it's just gonna affect the dragon, okay? So that's what's happening. And brighten it up and all that fun stuff. Um, now I can kind of manually kind of like work on the brights and darks and stuff like that, like try to maybe make it brighter or who knows what, but go into, let's actually we can probably go into the, the auto options, right? Or another thing you could do is hold down the option key and click auto. Actually, let's make, and let's make sure, by the way, I'm gonna make sure this, the curves layer is selected and not this uh, mask layer. But the curves is selected, hold down the option key, click auto, that's gonna give you this auto color correction options, right? So right in here, I can kind of determine what the dark and light colors are. So I don't have to really guess, I'll click on that. I'll pick the dark color. So right down here, I'll try to pick the darkest color in here, which happens to be right down here in these waves. Oops, so sorry. So sorry. I'm scrolling every, all, which, all the ways. <laughs> but I'm clicking down here and it's gonna sample this. It's gonna make the dark color this like bluish gray. Okay, so that's perfect. We'll add that bluish gray, we'll click okay. We'll go to the highlights. Currently these highlights are warm. Let's change the highlights to be the lightest part in this photo, which might be, again, the lightness of this water. So just by picking two colors, I can determine, uh, I can basically adjust this accordingly. Like it already looks pretty darn good. I mean, look at that. Come on now, people. Don't save it as a default. This is what it added. I didn't have to worry about changing the RGB or any of that. We have our before and then we have our after, right? I don't know, just really, I'm really into it. That's all I got to say. Uh, yes, at atmosphere, haze, shadow and distance blur, all those fun things. We should actually run down, we need a checklist for everything that you would 
that that you would uh, take uh, take into account, w which you're like spot on. We, we're only dealing with light right now, but you're exactly right. Like the graininess of this background image, you know, the detail in here, does this have the level of detail that it needs, right? Those are great. That's exactly what we need to do, right? And by the way, you need to kind of push it a little bit farther than necessary sometimes. Okay, so we have this, we have this light right up here, right? So what would happen with this light is it would get cast on this dragon, on the top of its head, on its tail, all those different parts, okay? Again, we could do this a couple different ways, right? We can have a new curves layer, a new levels layer. I'll just go into levels, right? Let's clip that to our lovely dragon. Let's crank that up like that. Right, and these could be basically the highlights. But let's invert this layer mask. So let's get rid of the levels. So since it's black, it's not showing, right? But if I start painting on white, excuse me, painting with white on top of it, it's gonna bring in those lovely highlights. So let's go back right down here. Uh, uh, right here and again pretty bright it's going to be a combination i could always adjust the levels later on since this is an adjustment layer and then the amount of white that i add will determine like you know how intense this is right in here we can just do that splash of light like there all right take this flow down a little bit more right it's all about starting out pretty subtle Splash a light there, splash a light right along here. You get the idea. Oh, thanks. And the only thing, sometimes why I'm a good teacher is like, if I, if I understand it, then I could probably teach it. Cause uh, you know, again, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm not a genius, but I know if I, if I actually know, it's, if you can't, if, if you can't explain something simply enough, simply you don't know it well enough is the short of it, right? If you can't explain something simply, then you just don't know it well enough. Again, that's not a quote from me. I forgot who said it, but I think it makes a lot of sense. So again, just kind of painting with light, but what I'm basically doing is um, removing this uh, black, this layer mask when I paint on top of it. And let me make this, those thumbnails a little bit bigger for you to see. Splash of brightness, right? Right down here, maybe for this hand. I'm thinking this is a 3D object. One thing you could do is you could actually draw on the image and say, hey, you know what? Where's this light coming from? The light is coming from here. Out like that, right? Like that. The light is 3D coming from that point. Just to give you an idea. Okay, so there's the light. That's where it's coming from. I can continue painting on it. All right, I got on a soapbox there a little bit about uh, training. Sorry for the soapbox. Maybe a little bit of light since this is 3D. Maybe this, this arm is sticking out at him a little bit more. I can add a little bit of brightness right there, right? Right, hopefully that makes sense. I'm just having some fun. Oh yeah, bring that brightness up, baby, do it. Get that splash of light kind of spilling over. Right, maybe right here, this wing is dimensional, right? Adding that light, you guys get the idea. All right, I will be quiet now. I think I've driven home this fact enough. These legs are under him, so definitely don't need any light there. We could do all this fine lighting work, make it a little bit brighter up there. You get the idea.
Oh, thank you, Carol. The Pixel Squid PSD files come with great masks built in. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I didn't know that. But yes, they are transparent already, which is nice. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I think that's that's not bad for a day's worth of work. Uh, looks pretty good. I can always move this around, right, and add some more to this. What else shall we add to it? Um, I think it was Sig. Sig, you were the, uh, yeah, uh, one that's talked about lighting and the blur and the, all that fun stuff. So I think that's really good. What we could do here, maybe, is there some sort of shadow or a reflection of this dragon in the water? So we're going to try that. It all depends on its position and how close it is, you know, to ya. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and try it. Command J to jump all those. Let's merge those together. Right, this is going to be my uh, sh uh, reflection. There we go. Let's move this reflection down. Get rid of that. And here's this dragon. Command T, right click, flip vertical, bam, zoop. We got Jason coming up next, uh, doing some video and audio masterclass. Uh, ooh, five more hidden gems. Hidden, I like hidden gems. Right, but here it is. Here's this uh, dragon. Let's turn that into a smart object so we can protect it. We'll go into, um, we, could do, we could do puppet warp. Again, just adding some pins, kind of changing that leg, flattening this out. This is all gonna get distorted like nobody's business, right? If it really is the reflection, it's gonna get crazy, okay? Um, maybe I didn't even need to do that, really. I kind of just don't like this foot. That's the only problem. So let's just puppet warp this one little foot. Boop, zoop, that. Okay, there we go. Uh, the lighting needs to change. The blend mode is something we will probably dive into since we're putting it in water, right? We can typically stick with this first segment right up here, all these dark colors. So remove the highlights and maybe just have those dark colors, right? Overlays work. Yeah, a number of things we need to we need to work on. Let's do um, let's go into the brightness and contrast. Oops, take the brightness down, not of the whole scene, just of that dragon right there. Yeah, this needs so much work and it might not even work, but we're gonna try it anyways. Okay. Uh, let's go to this reflection. We'll go into liquify. I like using liquify, honestly, because I have full control over the pixels that I push around, right? So I can come in here and just do a quick zigzag and have it match the water, right? It's gonna be zigzagged and maybe more dramatic in other places. Is this gonna work, Sig? Tell me, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Just kidding. All right, this is where somebody would say, um, uh, would talk about um, maybe using a filter effect using something like Wave because there's actually the wave filter that we could work with too, right? If this tail is over here, this gives me more of the exactness that I need though, like pushing this up, having it kind of follow that path right there, right? Okay, sure, why not? Yeah, I don't know guys. Let's just kind of put that like that. So just doing, I don't know, it's a reflection, a shadow, I don't know. Adding some atmosphere. Uh, 
so it's, it would be slightly darker on the water. Exactly right. That's why I took down the brightness. But it's just a hint of the dragon. I, I don't actually don't know if it should be the like the shadow. Kind of like more like the shadow of the dragon as opposed to the reflection. Um, this is another thing. Another like pro tip is if you are doing any sort of compositing, uh, it's super helpful to if, if the image already has an element in there that you can go ahead and uh, reference, right? So if we go back to this one that we did for the Daily Creative Challenge, if I was to put a little robot right here, which I might do, I need to match, uh, I would just use this bucket right here to match it, right? So again, we can jump into this one. Let's see if I have some assets to use. Wait for it. There we go, like this little guy. What about this guy? Or this guy? Okay, cool, let's do it. Let's go with this one. Yeah, this is actually pretty easy. Isn't this guy fun, right? Let's take this character. We'll jump into uh, properties panel. Remove background since it's a pixel based layer. Do your thing. Boom, it's done, right? It is magical, folks. Take this guy, bring him right down here. It didn't quite get, actually it took a little bit too much, because it actually took off the feet. Not to worry, you can jump in. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's make this work. Uh, I'm always, I sometimes scroll with the, um, Um, if you hold down, I'll, I'll use, I've been using some shortcut keys not to leave people out, but um, we both, well, you guys probably know you could use your bracket keys to change the size of the brush, right? Use the bracket keys, change the size of the brush, and hold down the shift key, and that's going to change the hardness. So shift, open bracket, that makes it soft. Shift, close bracket, makes it gives it a hard edge, okay? So those are the shortcut keys I end up using. So I can come down here and make sure it has a hard edge, kind of brush that in like so, okay? Uh, hit X to flip the colors from black to white, or excuse me, from white to black. Since I'm painting with black, I can remove that little part right down there and all that fun stuff, right? Cool. Um, this scene has, I'm so happy to be here, by the way. Can I just say that? I'm so happy to be here. So happy to show you these things. I'm glad I picked this image. This one works out really well. We have this robot, right? The robot was sitting on a scene, uh, in a scene that was like, had this glow of orange, right? So he's in a warm scene, he or she is in a warm scene, uh, but the scene that I'm bringing it into is actually very cool, right? Look at these grays. These are all cool grays, right? So uh, we want to make sure it matches. We can, again, there's about a thousand different ways we can do things in uh, good old Photoshop. But one way to do that is by adding an adjustment layer and adding a photo filter to it. So let's just try to add a photo filter to this robot layer. And we'll go right up here it already ha it has a warming kind of filter on it, but we're gonna change this to a cooling filter. So watch what happens when you do that. Change warm to cool, right? 
Uh, there we go. And that third cooling filter, now we can see it's like before. Hopefully you guys can see that, let's zoom in. Before he's a little too cool, uh, too warm, and this is after, right? And again, we can change this all we want and get this dialed in the way we want, like so, okay? All right, uh, what I would actually do is I would do like a ton more painting with this. I would add another layer, right? That's a, a clipping layer. I would um, make sure I have blue selected. Uh, B for brush, like, wait for it, wait for it, folks, because the thing is, you could still see that background being reflected. See that um, orange? It's already being reflected. Even down here, that's why I'm painting with this blue, right? Uh, so I can add blue to it. I can jump in and make sure it just targets certain colors. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm just rolling through these blend modes. Yeah, let's go with darken. Let's take down the opacity. All right, that's all I'm doing. All right. When I get quiet, that's when that's that's how you know I'm working. Uh, let me know if you have questions. Uh, so yeah, thank. Oh, I'm glad I showed or talked to uh, Michelle. Picked up a tip about the the hardness of the brush. Uh, I'm into it. Uh, a big thing I think is, um, if you want like an option, this is gonna sound really simple, like really straightforward, but if you want an option for an item, hold down the option key. Cause chances are, the team at Adobe, the engineers and the product managers have thought about the alternate to X. So hold down the Alt key if you're on a, uh, a PC or the Option key if you're on a Mac. And a lot of times that uh, option is there. All right. Cool. All right. So in this case, what I did is I created this bar. You see this right here? See this bar that I just kind of put on top of this because I want to uh, make this frame this blue color. So on that layer, we'll change the blend mode down to the very bottom color right there, selecting color. And it obviously like changes it like so. B for brush, let's just paint using that color. All right, everybody. Okay, I have, oh, I only have like five more minutes. Oh, hurry up, hurry up. Good thing this, this is a case of using the right photo for the right project. Right down here, I to sample that color, right? Oftentimes shadows aren't always um, black. You wanna make sure you're sampling a shadow right in here. It's doing an 11 by 11 average. That's a little high, but you know, sample those pixels. Go over here, B for brush. We'll just start painting. Let's just ground this guy. Like so. Let's add a clipping mask on top of him. Um, also, a lot of times it'll take like more than one um, layer. You'll have a, a, I typically like have a really tight shadow right on the edge, really tight on one layer, okay? And then you'll have a softer one 
on another layer. So this is the softer shadow, and this is the harder shadow. Cool. Still need to kind of clean this up. All right. Just like so. I was gonna have this little robot like spray painting is the idea. Okay, he's looking pretty good. He is not standing out, so he's not popping on that scene. He's not like popping off, off of it enough. I might wanna move him over, right? So it just like looks a little bit better. Let's move the shadow over a touch too, maybe. Let's play with it a little bit, just like that. There we go, that is good. All right, down to my last couple minutes. Uh, make him a touch brighter. What we should do is we should put a little spray can in his hand so he's like actually kind of spray painting the um, like his name or something. Or maybe he's floating. I don't know. There's lots of things we could do. All right. It did go way too fast. This whole hour went way too fast. Here's our little robot outside of the the bot bar, again, we could work on that all day long. This one was actually pretty easy. Uh, just threw a, a, a levels layer on top of him, right, to make him stand out a little bit. We can add more robots too. I have other robots that we can add, right? There's this one. How fun, right? But that is for another day. Super fun though, right? Let's take this, let's flip it horizontally. He could be riding in and his buddy's like, hey buddy, what's going on? It's good to see ya. All right. Go, hurry, Paul, hurry. Hurry, there's no time. All right, time is running out. Time is running out. He's like, what's up, buddy? There you are. Nice thing is I can actually take some of these other elements that I've already used and drop them in here. There we are. Well, anyways, down to our last couple of minutes. Jason's up next. He's going to give us all the tips that we need for when it comes to video and audio and for life in general, hopefully. Right? Do you have any life tips, Jason? Would love to hear them. Okay, there's our little, our other little buddy just kind of cruising around the corner. All right. Hard to see. I'll work on this some more. Um, hopefully, I'll get it posted to um, Instagram. But we can see that we made a lot of progress today. We had our fun orb that we started with, like so. We had our robots in their scene. And then of course we have the uh, lovely dragon that we worked on. So we did a lot. And um, you're welcome, Clever. Appreciate you, appreciate you, Cal. How you doing? Um, have a great weekend, Mallory. Everybody kind of stick around for Jason, by the way. Uh, I'm going to be going to Steamboat Springs is the plan, right? Still social distancing, but going to the mountains where there aren't a lot of people. That's the idea. Hopefully you learned a lot. Lots of tips going on actually all day today. So that's what's happening. I think I like the dragon the best. So I will post that to social media so you can... Uh, Check it out, and there's my little 
character that will give you my um, PTRANI Instagram name. All right, everybody, have a beautiful day. Uh, yeah, and where was Alexa today? Oh, I think I have Alexa turned off. All right, thank you, everybody. Stick around for Jason. It's going to be super fun hanging with him. And uh, yeah, be safe, be kind to one another, wash your hands, you know, the basic things of life that you should be doing. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you soon. Thank you.